holiday weekend, but every Sunday is uh, more like a holiday weekend for Christians where each one of us can get together. And one of the commandments that we have on the first day of the week or on Sunday is for us to commune with the Lord. And that's what we're about to do now. We have the bread, which represents Christ's body, and we have the cup and fruit of the vine, which represents his blood. So if you would, please let your mind go back to the cross of Calvary and clear everything else from your mind and try to picture Christ as he suffered and died on the cross and remember why he's done this for each one of us so that we'll have that hope of a home in heaven with him when our lives come to an end here on this earth. So please remember Christ and remember what he done for each one of us. Would you bow with me? Dear God, our Lord and Father in heaven, we're thankful, Father, to be here this morning. We're thankful, Father, to be able to assemble around this table and we're most indeed thankful, Father, for your son, Jesus, who come to this earth and suffered and died on the cross for each one of us so that we'll be able to join you in heaven someday if we live faithful. We pray, Father, that you would bless this bread and be with each one of us as we partake of it and help us to remember what you have done for us. For this prayer we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, our Lord and Father in heaven, we continue to ask your blessing upon this cup of fruit of the vine. We pray, Father, that you would continue to be with us and help us that we might be able to keep things clear from our minds all except for your son dying on the cross and help us to remember why he done so. And once again, Father, we pray that you would bless this cup and be with each one of us as we protect it. This. this prayer we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper, and this being a convenient time, if you've not already done so, there's a tray back in the sound booth for your offering today, which helps support the work of the church here at Somerset. So if you have not been able to give, please do so, you know, on your way out. And please remember that, like I said, what you give today is what helps carry on the work of the church here at Somerset and gives us a nice building to be in and stay dry at this time and stay warm in the winter and, you know, cooler in the summer. So, and, you know, helps support the work all over the world. So if you would, please bow with me. Dear God, our Lord and Father in heaven, we're thankful, Father, to be able to be here. We pray, Father, that you would help us that we might be able to give as we have been prospered. And help us, Father, to use the money that has been given wisely and that it will help carry on the work of the church here at Somerset as well as around the world. And we pray, Father, that you would once again help us to do so wisely for this prayer we'd ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
not all of us are like Treg, we can grow up in both places, so I gotta, <laughs> I, I gotta get it where I can. Uh, but but it's good good to be here. Uh, every time I, I come in, I, I don't know, growing up, I always thought that this building was, was huge, a huge building. Uh, but then you walk in and it's really it's really not. Uh, but these people just, just fill it up, and it's always great to see so many people uh, that I know we get to see a couple times a year, or maybe once a year, uh, and then some we haven't seen for a long time. Right, Molly? But it is, it is a blessing to be here. Uh, give you guys a quick update for our families, because so many people have been asking us this weekend, so where do you live? Do you live in, in Texas? Do you live in New Mexico? Uh, so I, I quickly took a snapshot. Um, to let you know that the answer is yes, uh, we're, we're in both. Uh, so if you look at the red dot up there, uh, that's Clovis, New Mexico, uh, and that's currently where we, we live, but we reside in Farwell, Texas, which is that little uh, yellow dot. Um, and it might be a little confusing, uh, but Clovis was a, it's a town of about 25,000, uh, and there's a lot more houses in Clovis that were available. Uh, Farwell's a town that's about 1,200, and there just weren't very many selections. Uh, but we are in the process of, of building on a, a house on the back end of, our, of Megan's parents' house. Uh, and so we moved from California to Texas, and we're able to be a little bit closer to one set of grandparents that way. Um, we, we, I'd like to say we flipped the coin up in the air to see which set of grandparents we were going to move closer to, but the decision was a lot easier than that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's, it's good to, to be here. On, uh, we have traditionally come on Labor Day weekends. We just moved halfway across the country, and now we can be here more than just Labor Day weekends. But uh, I got a lot of special memories uh, about uh, of this, this, this church. I got a lot of special memories about this building, and a lot of special memories about where we sit and, and where we have sat, uh, which I didn't really understand why we always sat by that door uh, growing up. Um, some of you might remember... Um, <laughs> That door makes a quick exit out to the parking lot uh, to get your butt spanked when you're not behaving. Uh, and then when I sat down, Gary turns, uh, quickly leaned up and whispered in mine and Aaron's ear that you two better behave yourself. Because uh, Gary was the one that always was able to observe that Kurt got taken out and got his butt spanked for stuff that Aaron started. <laughs> so I'll let, I'll let Gary, Gary tell that story. But I could, I could be up here and be reminiscing uh, for quite a while, but that's, uh, that's not what uh, our objective is this morning. Our objective is to talk about uh, Paul and, and why Paul describes himself with this term. Paul, a slave. We're going to be in Romans this morning, and to be able to answer the question why Paul uh, introduces himself as a slave, we want to kind of give a, about of a, a 10,000 foot overview of the beginning of Romans, and we're going to dive in a little bit into chapter 6 to understand why Paul chooses to use the word slave. Uh, this is an introduction, and, and in a lot of his letters, um, he will use different terminologies to, to describe the slave, or to describe who he is. But in Romans, he specifically introduces himself to that congregation as a slave. The challenge that we have when we read the word slave, we will have a different connotation to that word, a different association to that word uh, than, than the original audience did. And, and it's to a point where if you were to open up your Bibles today, um, you would most likely see some different words. Uh, but our culture plays an integral role in the way that we read, interpret, and apply Scripture. How many of you are familiar with the, the parable of the prodigal son? Okay. What happened... Before, and this is where I'm going to ask a question. It's not just going to be a question, a rhetorical question. I, I want a response. Um, what happened prior to the son starting to go back home? And that's a kind of a vague question, right? We, we remember that he started feeding some pigs and there was a realization. But what got him to the point where he had to feed pigs? The way he lived his life and spent his money, right? If we were to look in Luke, how many of you remember the famine that occurred? Okay, I'm getting some, some, some blank stares, which tells me that we don't realize, that we don't remember that in the book, of, or in the story of the prodigal son, he ran, he, he spent his money, but then a great famine spread across the land. And it's at that point that he goes out and, and has to feed pigs. 
So what was the impact of him spending all his money versus the impact of a famine? Uh, there was a, a, an academic scholar named Mark Powell who does closed reading uh, exercises. So what a closed reading exercise is, is that he will have someone read a portion of scripture to another individual. And then uh, the other individual will keep their Bible open. The person who initially read it will close it and then retell the scripture, uh, paraphrase it as close as they possibly can and remember all the details. In America, 6% of the people retelling the story of the prodigal son remembered the famine. In Russia, 86% of the people retelling that story remembered the famine. What was the difference? Famine. They had experienced famine. And because they had experienced famine, their, their take on the prodigal son was different. Their culture had, had influenced their, their, their association with that 